Now that can be configured to be less obtrusive, but so it has some usability issues or else requires some configuration. But that is one possibility if you're looking to be more secure. Um, another a very useful option that I just learned about the other day is that on tinyurl, you can enable a cookie that will require you to preview the URL before it'll redirect you. So once that cookie's set in your browser, it will always prompt you for redirect. And I think that's a great idea. So I, I think there are some useful things that, that can be done here that like, like what tinyurl has done. But it also requires users to take action to really benefit from it. <clears throat> okay, so that is it for my rant. So um, a couple other issues, at least one other issue here that I wanna talk about. And that's uh, this fun little bug called reading redirects. Um, this is, if you would like, the, where the term cross-site location jacking kind of came from, but we weren't really trying to create a new buzzword. We just thought we're having fun. But it's this um, issue that's actually first came out in, nine, or in 2008. It was reported to Mozilla that there's an issue with when a page, um, when you have some, <clears throat> okay, let me explain it just right. So say that you are on a page and it's, launches um, or references some third external site like a, like a, um, an image or some other file and that ends up getting redirected. If the page that does that original launching can see the destination of the redirect, then is that a good thing or a bad thing? Do we care? Well, at first you might not think that that would be such a big deal, but it actually there's a lot of situations that can become, that you can come up with where that is a bad deal. So are these terribly common? No, but they are the sorts of things that if you're serious into application security or, and pen testing that you probably wanna be aware of and look out for because there's, it's also something that can be avoided really easy. So what exactly is the issue? So <clears throat> you can have um, URL, um, what's the word here? So you can have, um, um, this is an original issue with style sheets if you um, specify a CSS reference that, that points to a third party, that you can use um, some JavaScript um, DOM, uh, DOM properties in order to access what the target of the redirection is. And so th in that case, if you, th if you think what are the sorts of things that could be attacked, well, if you go to a website like um, Yahoo or Google.com and you have a Google profile, what if it redirected you to google.com slash your username. Well, that's a way of leaking what your username is because the, the launching page can now kind of use that to ID, fingerprint you or ID you. Another more severe case would be if you go to, if there's some website that will, when you go to like the home page, if it automatically reloads with, in the URL of your session credentials. That means that the an attacker page could abuse that issue so that when you landed on the page, um, the, the, so that when you go onto the page, it makes a request to the home page, and then is able to read your session credentials for this site. So that's you know your session cookies. That's like you know kind of like cross-site scripting cookie theft essentially. So it is can it can have serious consequences if it, when you have these types of issues. So as a like web developer, these are the types of things to look out for. So I have a couple other examples here, but due to interest of time, I'll skip over. Um, Eduardo had a fun one too that if you have time I'd go check out. Um, so b before closing, there's just one last thing that I'd like to mention and that's a, a tool that we, um, that really Eduardo came up with for testing uh, these types of issues. Actually it originally started out as a cross-site scripting uh, test tool and, uh, but it can also be used for testing redirects. We were gonna write a separate tool to do the redirects but we realized that our cross-site scripting test tool had everything already built into it. So. Um, uh, we, we wanted to, we, this is something that we've used on our server that we run, 0x.lv, but I wanted to just show you real quick how it works. So it's just a simple PHP script. Um, if you are curious what the source code is, you just load the URL, xss.php, question and puts um, source, and you can get the source code to the page. And if my internet connection here works, this should bring up the source code. Um, so um, I'll give that a second. Yes, so there we go. So this is the source code. If you want, you can download this and play with it, improve it, do whatever, it's all open. So how you would actually use this for redirects, I just wanted to give one quick example here. So um, there's uh, one of the keywords, or the URL parameters, get parameters is status, and you can give it any status code that you want. So if I gave it um, like a status code here, 
302, and then I tell it with reader underscore XSS what my location destination will be, then this will redirect me to some other site. So it's great for testing. You can instantly, you know, not have to create custom files in your server for every little thing you want to test. You just pass it in the little details in the URL, and you're good. And just to kind of show the kind of interesting issues you can show, this is one that we discovered just last night as we're playing around. Um, if you use a 304 redirect, which is actually not a redirect, but uh, it just says basically that the resource isn't modified, and the browser don't expect there to be a body response with this. But in this particular case of the test tool, there is a body. So just one kind of interesting issue we noticed the other night is that if you reload this page, you, the browser is getting confused about what's actually going on. So if you reload it a couple times, um, you, it, you, my browser is actually um, getting confused about when the content, where the content link is. And so it's waiting for an additional response. And so I can sometimes get it to you know, show the headers of a separate request. So that's uh, just to show you, you know, the kind of really easy, fun things that you can find with a tool like this just by making everything accessible there through the URL. So I apologize I've gone over time, but I thank you all for coming out, and I'll answer questions afterwards. Thanks.